everyone, it's Mindy and welcome back to my channel. Today I have two cards to share with you in this video featuring the Elegant Aster stamp set from Gina K Designs. I have really been enjoying black and white images with a pop of color and so that is what I'm going to show you today and we'll be doing lots of ink blending so let's get started. Here's a look at some of the supplies that we'll be using in the video today. This is the Elegant Aster stamp set, so you can see it has some beautiful images on here. There's a coordinating die that goes with it. I'll be using the Black Amalgam ink, and I have five colors listed here, but I actually only end up using Red Hot, Sea Glass, and Wild Dandelion. I also have a life-changing blending brush, and then some of the Glitz Glitter Gel in black, and we are going to be making our own glitter paper, and this is just going to be so gorgeous. I cannot wait to show you some fun little tricks that I found with it. And then also those crystalline drops that goes with that. Now the first thing that I want to do is I want to create my own homemade glitter paper. So that's the first thing I'm doing because I need this to dry. So I'm taking this black glitz glitter gel and my spatula and I'm going to smooth this all over some black cardstock. Now you don't want to go over it too many times because you'll end up kind of scraping across the cardstock. Just a couple really nice good swipes just so it's a nice even coverage over it and then I'll put it off on the side to dry. I did let mine dry overnight just to make sure that it was really good and dry because I'm going to die cut from this piece but I would say at least a good four hours just to ensure nothing is going to stick to your die when you die cut, die cut from it. So now here is the gorgeous glitter paper that we created and you could do this with any of the colors that come for the Glitz Glitter Gel. While that's drying, we'll go ahead and start some ink blending. So I am starting off with some white layering cardstock and the Life Changing Blender brush this is the Red Hot ink from Gina K Designs I'm starting with in that top corner. So I'm just using three mini ink cubes to create my own rainbow. And I'm starting the red up in the top, kind of blending out a little bit. I'm going to get softer as I get further away from that corner. Next, I'll come in with the Wild Dandelion. And I'm going to add a strip right down that middle. And I'm just getting softer on each side because I want the yellow to mix with my red and also that sea glass because that's what's going to create that rainbow of color. So once I have the yellow down, I come back in with the red that's going to give us our orange. And I just kind of go over that a few times to make sure that's really nice and blended. And I like to wipe up on my glass mat here in between because I don't want to get too much of that red into the yellow. I would still want to have yellow on my card. And then the bottom corner, I'll come in with the sea glass blend that up into the yellow and just go back and forth over that until it's a really nice smooth transition. And then as these inks dry and soak into the paper, it creates such a smooth blend. It is gorgeous. Once I'm happy with the blend, I'm just going to buff that out just a little bit more. And then I want to add a little bit of interest to this background. And to do that, I'm taking some perfect pearls and I'm just going to scoop a little bit onto my glass media mat here and then I'll spritz some water down and mix those up and it's kind of funny because when I spritzed it I couldn't see where my water was so you'll see it's a little dry there when I start mixing it but I just kind of mix those two together to create a little mixture and then I'll pick it up with my paintbrush and I'm going to scrape it onto an acrylic block. This is one of my favorite ways of adding speckles to a background is flicking off of a block. You could also just tap your finger or you could put a mixture into a little Mr. Spray bottle and spritz it onto your background as well. But this is one of my favorite ways. So just putting that onto that block and then I'm going to go all the way around the card and add that little flicks. And this is just giving it a little bit of sparkle and shine to the card. And just making sure I have that covered everywhere. I don't have any bare spots. And you can see I have a beautiful shine on that background now. Perfect for a rainbow. So I'm going to set that off on the side to dry. And I'm going to start working on my images. Now I'm not doing anything fancy with these. I'm really liking black and white on color. 
So I'm just going to stamp all of the images from the stamp set except for the butterfly. I'm going to do that in a, a project down the road. So I just picked out all the flowers and the leaves. I end up using most of these items. So I loaded those up into my Misty tool. I am stamping on the Gina K Designs heavyweight cardstock. I really like having just a really nice thickness to my images when I'm stamping and die cutting them out. So I'm using the black amalgam ink and I like to go over them twice. So I'll just give those a nice push down so I have a great impression on all of them. And then I will take the coordinating die and line it up with each of the images and I'll hold them in place with some of the purple tape from Thermoweb. And I like to use my Gemini Junior when I'm die cutting. And how I do this is I have a magnetic sheet there. Once I have everything held down, I just flip that over and put my cutting plate on top and run that through the machine. You can see my cutting plate is very well loved. So now that everything is die cut, I'll go ahead and just carefully remove that purple tape and pop out all of my images. So here's a look at everything that we die cut. Now I can go ahead and start putting my card together. So I am using a Whisper cardstock as my card base and that measures a four and a quarter by five and a half. I'm attaching a piece of the heavyweight cardstock, white cardstock, uh, that's measured four by five and a quarter and I'm just using the Gina K Designs tape runner to do that. And my background here that I had ink blended is three and three quarters by five inches. So I just have some really nice layers going on on the card. I'm not going to add too much more dimension to it except for my sentiment when I get to it. And then I just need to arrange my flowers. So you can do this however you prefer. I kind of already had an idea in mind how I wanted it to go. So I'm just tucking everything in. And when I'm happy with the placement, I'm going to go ahead and use the Connect Glue, and I start with the leaves because that's the furthest back image on my uh, arrangement that I have here. So I just kind of lightly pick everything up and tuck those leaves behind, and I'll just continue going through adding the leaves, layering up my flowers, and normally I would probably pop one of the flowers up with foam tape, but because I know I'm going to add dimension with my sentiment, I'm just going to leave these all flat on the card front. Now we can go ahead and start die cutting our sentiment since our glitter paper is nice and dry. I am using this beautiful Scripty Hugs die. So what I'll do is I'll lay that uh, cutting die face up. This is using the Gemini Junior sandwich and then my handmade glitter paper face down so that it's going to cut into my cutting plate. Now I do run this through my machine twice only because I cannot find my shim that goes with my machine. Uh, so it, it still cuts out beautifully. There were a couple spots that were a little bit snug to get out, but for the most part this cut through great. I didn't have any rips or tears. Uh, one area I may have had to snip with my scissors, but I just didn't want to risk ripping anything. And I actually have done this a couple times, and they both came out perfect. So there is the beautiful glittered up hugs sentiment. I'm also going to take that hugs, and I'm going to die cut it from black cardstock, I think about two or three more times, because I wanted to create dimension with this, so I want to layer it up. So I'll go ahead and get that done. And then just using the Gina K Designs Connect Glue, I'm going to go ahead and layer that. You could also have put some stick it adhesive on the back of your black cardstock, and you could have done it that way and avoided any uh, liquid glue if you wanted to. Now I'm going to work on my little sentiment. So I have hugs, and unfortunately I do need a condolences card. Uh, so this is from the hugs stamp set, and this says, and prayers. I'm lining this up in the bottom corner of a piece of black cardstock that I have. I'll prep that cardstock with an anti-static powder tool, and then I'm going to ink this up with the Gina K Designs embossing ink, and I'll heat it up with the white, em white embossing powder. And now I know rainbow cards as a condolence may seem a little odd, but I think it's a great idea because 
when you're going through something like that, I think seeing something nice and cheerful would really brighten their spirits. So that was kind of my take on it. I just really wanted to cheer her up during this time. So once I had that heat embossed, I do take my Tim Holtz paper trimmer and I'm trimming this into a very thin strip. I really like the look of labels. You ever notice how you go through phases on, car on your cards on what you like? Right now, this is my phase. So once I had the black cardstock trimmed down, I attach it to some white cardstock and then I'm going to trim that down. So it's going to look like a black label and it has a white border around it. Just kind of adds a little bit more interest to the card, a little bit more black and white with all of that color in the background. And then I'll take the connect glue. Sorry about my head getting in the way there. I'm wearing a hat while creating. And I'm just going to attach that right to the front of my card, kind of overlapping my flowers. And I'll just hold that down for a few minutes, make sure that that's sticking really well. And this, this is complete magic right here. I'm taking these crystalline drops that Gina has and I'm putting this over top of our handmade glitter paper. And this is so gorgeous. When it dries, the pictures do not do justice. Now you can see when it's wet, it is kind of foggy looking, but when it dries, it is beautiful. Now, because I did this on camera and it's still wet, I can't attach my sentiment. But here is the one I had made previously, and I had just used a tape runner or some liquid glue and attached the sentiment right on top of my hugs die that I had uh, cut out there. So, so gorgeous. I highly recommend trying out those crystalline drops with the Glitz Glitter Gel. Now for my next card, we are going to be doing quite a bit of stamping and then a little bit of ink blending. And I'll show you how I did that hello die in those rainbow colors. Super easy. First, I'm going to create the background. So I do have a piece of white cardstock here. This is the heavyweight. I like to stamp on the heavyweight just because I like to have a nice sturdy card when I'm creating. So once again, I'm going through and just using all of those images from the stamp set except the butterfly. I'm definitely getting to that later, but that butterfly is going to be a focal point all on its own for me. So I just randomly arranged my flowers and leaves onto the cardstock, and I'm going to stamp them with the amalgam ink. And I do like to go over it twice. I had one little part that was kind of being a, a stinker for me, but just kind of went back, stamped that again. The beauty of stamping with a Misty, because I never could have done that with an acrylic block. And I am cleaning up my stamps in between. Now you'll notice, once I did wipe them down with the tidy towel, I pushed my hand over them just to pick up any dampness that might have still been left over. Same thing with on my Misty. I wiped that down so I don't have any ink um, sitting there waiting for me to smudge. And then I do wipe that away too so my cardstock is not going on top of anything wet. I point that out because somewhere along the line, I had forgotten to kind of dab that excess dampness off, and I'll show you how I fix it. But right now, I'm just going to go through and I'm rearranging the flowers. This is also why I'm kind of uh, patting that ink off or that wetness off is because I am rearranging them on my card. Right there it is. If I could circle it on my screen, I totally would for you. That bottom left-hand corner. So my solution for it was I'll cut it off. I just trimmed this panel down. Uh, I think the final measurements of this was three and three quarters by five inches. And I mounted some craft foam behind it. And I'm attaching that to some barely beige cardstock, which is a really, really nice pale color. I thought it went really well with the rest of the card. So now the fun part here for some ink blending is I'm taking this Hello Script word die. I'm going to line that up on my cutting plate and die cut this from some layering white cardstock. Now, if you wanted, you could arrange this in a certain way so you could use both pieces. I wasn't really thinking in that zone at the moment, but you totally could. So once I took that out, you could see it stayed in place pretty well. It's cut really good. It cut through everything, but it stayed in place really well. And I want to leave it like that. So I'm going to just set that off on the side. While I have that die out, I'm going to go ahead and cut two more layers from some white cardstock. 
because I'm going to layer these again like I did in my previous card. So now the fun part here is I flipped over that piece of cardstock that has the hello still stuck in it and I'm putting a strip of post-it tape behind it. That's just a really nice temporary adhesive. It's going to hold my words in while I do some ink blending. Now this time for ink blending, I'm starting with the yellow right in the middle because I want to make sure I kind of have an even, um, I want it to be even on both sides. So I'm starting off with that nice bright wild dandelion right in the center, softening up as I get to each side. And then I'll come in from the left with the red hot and I'll blend over into that yellow so it's going to give us that orange and I don't want to go too far because I want to make sure I still have yellow in there to the only the only color that's getting shafted here is purple and I just kind of go back and forth just like I had done on my background I'm just kind of going back and forth over where those colors meet to create that middle co color so same thing now on the right hand side, I'm coming in with the sea glass and then I'll go back and forth between the sea glass and the yellow to create that green. And so by having that post-it tape behind this, holding that in place, this just makes it really easy to ink blend any of the word dyes. And you could do this with anything you have in your stash or any of the new ones that Gina has, which are all simply amazing. Once I'm happy with my ink blending, I'm just carefully removing that post-it tape and then I can pop my ink blended word out and I have this gorgeous rainbow. Now I do need a slight small sentiment for the bottom under my hello and I'm going to use that Spring Joy stamp set. It has the word friend on there which was really cute so I did go off screen and heat embossed, heat embossed that and I created it just like I did the previous one in the first card we did. So I'm just attaching my hello to my card front and I'm just using the Gina Cake Connect glue. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put some foam squares on the back of the word friend and I'm gonna attach that right underneath so we have a hello friend. So I really like this black and white background with these bright rainbow colored sentiment on top. I thought that was just a really cool design and look. That will finish up both cards for today. I hope you enjoyed today's inspiration. If you did, I would really appreciate a thumbs up on the video. That just helps so other viewers can see these cards as well. And if you want to see more from me, you can go ahead and click the subscribe button and the little bell to make sure you're notified of when any new videos come out. Thank you so much for stopping by and I'll see you next time.